Ty Rivers are living a lot of flowing out of Now today, listen up. Today was a very historic day for the ramp and for your life. This is the first time that the ramp has ever had a baptismal service like this and you were part of making history today. Isn't that awesome? I'm going to tell you, how many of you can declare that you will never ever be the same again? Now, you're going to go back home and the people are going to see the glow of the Lord all over you. They're going to see that something significant has happened to your life. So I want to set you up to prepare to share with them what God's done in your life this weekend. So I want to practice on your neighbor. Look at him and tell him this. Tell him you should have been there. Now point to yourself and say, when I came through, say this, the ramp was on fire. Throw your hands up and say, the Holy Ghost too. Put your hands on your head and say, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Come on, do a Holy Ghost spin and say, I felt the Spirit moving all over me. Come on, look at somebody else and tell them, you should have been there. Come on, when I came through, come on, church was on fire. Now say, the ramp was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. Put your hands on your head and say, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Come on, I felt the Spirit moving. All over me. Now, how many of you ready to help me testify today? Here we go. One, two, one, two, ready. You should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire. The Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet. From the spirit moving all over me. Say, you should have been there when I came through. Church was on fire and the Holy Ghost too. From the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Yeah, but I-
Well, praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome into the Gospel Music Jude Box. Let me take just a moment to say howdy to everyone over there in the chat room. I love you guys. We got Brother Chester Boston in the house. Amen. God been all over him, he says. Amen. God is God everywhere. We got Sister Carolyn Adams. Uh, she know what you be talking about. We got the living water. Praise God and the water was cold. Amen. Along with my lovely wife, Miss Pauline Cheney tonight. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. Hey, we're going to be talking about breaking the spirit of poverty tonight right here at the Gospel Music Jude Box. Listen, the spirit of poverty has to do with, uh, well, your mind, <clears throat> your emotions and attitudes, not money. We're not talking about money tonight unless you worship money. Uh-oh, look out. The spirit of poverty can be upon, well, good spirit-filled tithers. Yes, it can. The spirit of poverty can be youth, well, anyone or anything. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight, breaking the spirit of poverty. Listen, this is how Satan plants the spirit of poverty in your life. It becomes all about what you want or what your wife wants or husband wants or what your children want. Well, what everybody wants around you except what God wants. Hmm, interesting. Right here tonight at the Gospel Music Jukebox, talking about breaking the spirit of poverty. Hey, listen, all believers are in war, and I'm talking about a war with the devil. Look in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, and we're going to be right back. Be blessed. Jesus never opened his mouth Oh, from the child to the crucifixion To the grave it was laid out After three days in the garden tomb I can hear the angels sing The lamb came forth as a lion And the lion became the king Oh, you won't find him again at the whipping post Standing there so meek and he won't be nailed to a rugged cross Through his hands and through his feet Oh, and there'll never be another Calvary Cause they don't have to prove one thing The day the Lamb became the Lion And the Lion became the King Live on earth for man By most he was rejected Because he came for the eyes of lamb Oh, but the day is soon approaching That every eye shall see That the lamb and lion of Judah Has been crowned the king of kings Oh, you won't find him again At the whipping post Standing there so meek And he won't be nailed to a rugged cross Through his hands and through his feet Oh, and there'll never be another Calvary Cause they don't have to prove one thing Today the Lamb became the Lion And the Lion became the King No, you won't find him again at the whipping post Standing there so meek And he won't be nailed to a rugged cross Through his hands and through his feet Oh, and there'll never be another Calvary Cause they don't have to prove one thing Today the Lamb Became the lion and the lion became the king. Oh, that's the day the lamb became the lion and the lion became the king.
Well, praise God and God bless. Good to see Brother Philip drop by in the house tonight. Yes, right up there out of Pikeville, Kentucky. Talking about the country where they have to pump of the sunshine in. If you ever been there, you know what I'll be talking about. But thank God Brother Philip lives up on the mountain. He gets to see a little bit throughout the day. Amen. Praise God. We just love you guys. You guys are awesome. Hey, talking about breaking the spirit of poverty tonight. Listen, all believers are in war, a war with the devil. You can look there in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Listen, and, and, and his evil spiritual forces, which he dispatches and assigns to preparate and, and to dispatch his wickedness throughout the world, my friend. Listen, the scripture says that we wrestle against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Look in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We are all aware of the evil characteristics of Satan, are we not, if we're born again, bathed in the blood? Listen, we know that he kill, steals, and destroy. I want you to look tonight in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10. But beyond his routine harassment and temptations or hit-and-run tactics, listen, the devil, he forces and he focuses to seek territory to establish long-term strongholds in which they, well, they may dominate and hold captive. Satanic forces, listen, they search for people, cities, and nations in which they are not resisted and where they may flourish. Do you hear me talking to you now? They seek in places where they're not resisted. You got to remember that God says in his word for us to come out from amongst the world and be a separated people. Tonight, we've got a lot of people that has the spirit of poverty hovering over them. And that's what we're going to be talking about throughout the program. So you definitely want to get your pencil, your paper. Man, you want to keep notes. You want to go back, listen to the archive, get the books I'm sharing with you. Grab those verses for we know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Are you tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you tired of the spirit of poverty hanging over you, your family, your community, your your county, your state? Listen, it's time for us to stand up and take back what the enemy has stole. Listen, strongholds could be uh, actual demon possession, um, can merely be a, a, a strong influence or a grip present or um, oppression or obsession hindrance or harassment believers listen you got to know this if you're born again believer tonight you got to understand that a believer i'm talking about those filled with the holy ghost and fire i'm talking about had received the baptism that comes from god do you hear me the promise he'll not leave you comfortless do you hear me tonight believers cannot be demon possessed but many christians are the victim of satan's strongholds and the oppressed are oppressing from outside going to be talking about that throughout the program because we're going to get to the root of the problem. Listen, the devil's primary strategy is to, well, discuss his activities so he disguises them. Yes, he does. He discusses them with his little legions of demons, and then they disguise their activities so that it appears that, well, someone or something else is to blame. He wants us to get our attention on his uh, strategies, his, his, his instruments, his, his, see, he wants us to wrestle with them so that our battle will be uh, directed against the symptoms instead of the real source. Now, listen, we all know that a um, diagnostic, uh, uh, di when you've got a, a, a cold, uh, you can take some digestive medicine and it'll relieve a stuffy nose, but it will not cure a cold. Now, likewise, you can fight with the symptoms of the devil, but you will not end the problems until you deal with the source and bind the strong man. Talking about breaking the spirit of poverty out of our lives, I'm talking about destroying it. Do you hear me tonight? I'm talking about becoming the man or woman of God that God has called you to be. Now, listen, you got to remember when... when uh, uh, Peter 
you know, resisted Jesus' uh, discussion to return to Jerusalem, listen, knowing that he would be crucified there. Jesus did not rebuke Peter, but he turned to Peter and rebuked Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. Look in Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. See, Peter wasn't demon-possessed and probably didn't even intend to be an offense. However... The devil inspired Peter's statement, and Jesus went after the real source of the problem, and that's what you and I have to do in our life. We have to recognize who our enemy is. We have to stand and speak with the boldness with the Holy Ghost such as we ought to. we got to remember who we are in the body of Christ. Now, Paul said that our battle is not with flesh and blood, but with spiritual uh, adversaries. Look in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. you got to know how important it is that we understand what the real root of the problem is, my friend, who our real enemy is. Listen, it is Satan. It's not flesh and blood. It's not our brethren. It's not our family. It's not our children, not our household and our wives, not our employers, not our, not our co-workers, not our government. No, the devil is the enemy. We'll be right back. Get your pencil. Get your paper. You want to keep notes tonight as we talk about breaking the spirit of poverty. One I thought would never end No matter where I go Oh, and it's a long ride Just to get by But I've learned a lot along the way And I found I've learned how to fight a good fight of faith. A good fight of faith. There's nothing left to bring me down. Nothing standing in my way. You just can't take what I. I've learned how to fight a good fight of faith Now and then I can see that long I'll never be again That's one thing that I know Oh, cause it's a hard ride Just to get by And I thank God He's made a way To bring me peace of mind I learned how to fight a good fight of faith. A good fight of faith. There's nothing left to bring me down. And nothing standing in my way. I just can't take what I know. Getting by. I found a place to make my stay. 
And it brings me peace of mind Cause I've learned how to fight A good fight of faith Oh, it brings me peace of mind Cause I've learned how to fight A good fight of faith Well, praise God. Talking about breaking the spirit of poverty. Listen, you got to know the spirit of poverty has to do with, uh, well, your mind, your emotions and attitudes, not necessarily money. The spirit of poverty can be upon, well, good spirit-filled people that are tithers and faithful to the church. The spirit of poverty can be upon uh, churches or youth or anyone or anything. You got to understand this because all believers are in war. A war with the devil. You've got to know this. All right. Want to talk just a moment about how to know when you have the spirit of poverty dogging your heels, my friend. First, let's start with this. Did you know that you have the ability to change any situation or circumstance that you currently are facing? Yes, you do. This is done by finding the Word of God on a specific topic and renewing your mind with the truth about that matter. So if you find that you are suffering with the spirit of poverty, decide that you will change your situation and put on the spirit of prosperity. You see, you say, well, what is the spirit of poverty? In order to determine if you have the spirit of poverty, they are two basic principles that you must know. These principles work for both the positive and negative in our lives. They are, number one, listen, we shall have whatsoever we say. Look in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Number two, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Look in Proverbs 23, verse 7. The scripture says it like this there in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he say shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Listen, I'm going to ask some questions now, and I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it for just a few moments. We're going to slow the pace down. I'm going to ask you some questions, and this is going to help determine if that spirit of poverty is barking at your heels my friend you can answer it to yourself you don't have to post in the chat room be honest with yourself because god knows the truth you see he knows you and i better than we know ourselves but listen <clears throat> as i asked you see you'll know if you've got the spirit of poverty barking at your heels if you justify your lack and make excuses do you justify your lack and make excuses? Are you critical of those who teach and preach prosperity? You know where you stand. God knows where you stand. But listen, we're talking about recognizing if the spirit of poverty is barking on your heels. Maybe it's already moved in, settled above your family, your, your community, your, your county, maybe your church. But listen, you don't think that a man or a woman of God should live in abundance. If you feel like this, you've got to know that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels, my friend. You are... If you're afraid to give under the direction of the Holy Ghost, the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels, maybe already moved in. See, you govern your finances with a lack of trust and don't believe God is your source. If you feel that you have to govern your finances, and you have a lack of trust in this area. The spirit of poverty is barking at your heels. It may have already moved in, settled in. You've got to be aware 
of the devil and his devices. Listen, if you are suspicious that those around you may take your money. Listen, when things are are being handed out for free, do you grab as much as possible, even if you don't need the things that are being gave at all? This is ways you can recognize that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels, my friend. Listen, when you can't even imagine tithing to God until, well, let's say after you win the state's lottery. You know, a lot of people say, well, I can't afford to tithe. I can't tithe. I, there's no way I can afford it by the time I pay my bills, by the time that I take care of necessities of life. Listen to what they're saying. I can't afford to tithe. Friend, I'm telling you tonight that you can't afford not to tithe. Not only money, but I'm talking about time. I'm talking about doing the Word of God, applying the Word of God in your life. I'm talking about things that you can look at and be aware and begin to recognize that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels or maybe has already moved in. Listen, when you begin to feel your source of money is the government or your boss, maybe your parents. Listen, do you apply for a job that is advertised? You are willing to do any job as long as there is money involved. See, this is one of the signs that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels, my friend. When you see a brother in Christ prospering, and immediately the thought comes to your mind that he must be doing something immoral or illegal. How can he get all that and I don't get nothing? When you see a brother in Christ prospering and, and jealousy arises up in you, the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels. It could have already moved in, settled in. You could be believing a lie. You could convince yourself and justify sin in your life and hide the spirit of poverty. Listen to what's happening. You cannot do, you cannot, nor do not want to work for free. You have to be paid for everything you do. Do you have that spirit on you where you're not going to do nothing for free? You have to be paid for everything you do, or, or they have to give you something for everything you do. In other words, you don't have uh, the spirit of giving. Listen to me. The spirit of poverty is barking at your heels, or could have already moved in if you are not doing for others when you see a need and maybe there's no money look you do it you give looking for nothing in return giving of your time and of maybe it's a little work maybe you need to mow the grass for an elder uh, uh widow woman or widower in your neighborhood but i'm saying these are ways you can recognize that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels tonight if you apply some of these things that i'm talking about to your life listen If the ideal of sowing into someone's ministry is just, well, mere hopeless, impossible to you, you're just not going to do it. You're not going to sow into no other, no other, nobody's ministry to help further the gospel, the commission around the world. You're just not going to do it because immediately you begin to think about the negative. You begin to think about, well, they're crooks and robbers. They're riding this. They're doing that. You know, well, think about it now. What would lead you to think like that when you don't even know what's going on unless you get involved? I'm telling you, if you feel this way, the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels. Sometimes you can tell that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels when you pray and ask God for just enough provision that you and your family won't starve. See, you need a seed to be a sower. Listen, you can tell the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels when your weekly bill at the video store, well, computer games is more than you give in a, in a month to your church. When you waste not only money but time when you find that you have idled away the day and done nothing for the kingdom of God. The spirit of poverty is barking at your heels. It could already be settled in.
Listen, you can tell the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels when you try out many get-rich-quick scams. See, you put your trust in winning competitions and winning the jackpot. You even tell God you will start tithing if he helps you win. The spirit of poverty is already settled in upon you because it's not about what God wants. It's about what you want, and you're trying to make deals. You're not trying to live by the word of God. The spirit of poverty is barking on your heels. I'm sharing with you ways that you can recognize and be aware of the devil's devices. But see, the truth will make us free. We must be truthful as we confess our faults. We must be truthful when we repent of sin in our life because God searches the range of our hearts. Listen, you, you know that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels if you complain about having to pay taxes on an unexpected bonus or reward. You're trying to keep the whole thing, but Jesus said, Give and render unto Caesars the things which are Caesars, and give unto God the things which are God's. Listen, I'm telling you tonight, be aware that we're at war with the devil and his legion of demons. You can tell that the spirit of poverty is barking at your heels if you cannot believe that God really wants you, really wants to bless you. See, if you cannot believe that God really wants to bless you, and you begin to think that God only blesses rich people, but not me. When you begin to think that God wants to bless others, but not you. The spirit of poverty is barking at your heels or is already moved in and hid under the rug in your life. Listen, God truly meant for his children to prosper. It's, it's documented throughout the entire Bible, my friend. But the great liar and deceiver Satan, the hater of all of mankind, has successfully fooled the world, especially believers, into believing that our closeness to God is based on how poor we are or how willing to be poor we are. We must stand up, take back what the enemy has stolen from us, and accept the blessings of God without condemnation. I'm telling you tonight, the spirit of poverty can be broke out of your life. We'll be right back. This ain't no house of the blues. It's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blues Lay your burden down Hey, crank the music loud Forget about your hurts Endless house and church Cause when your praise goes up The glory will come down Let go of your fear and dry your tears God's gonna turn it around This ain't no house of the blues it's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of blues
a broken heart Well, you're in the right place To find mercy and grace There's a miracle man And one touch from his hand Can take away your pain So in Jesus' name Just take your claim This ain't no house of the blue It's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blues Hey, get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blue No, 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 no Ain't no house of the blue Well, praise God. Talking about destroying, breaking the spirit of poverty that may be over your life. I don't know. We're, we're talking about ways of recognizing if the spirit of poverty is barking up your hills. We've discussed that. Now we're going to move on into binding the strong man. Listen, one time after Jesus had cast out a devil and healed a deaf and mute boy, Jesus explained that in order to overturn the work and activity of the devil, we must bind him first. Or else how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? <clears throat> and then he will plunder his house. Look in Matthew chapter 12, verse 29. Listen, in order to neutralize the devil's works, we must go and deal directly with the source and bind up the devil so that his hands are tied. Then we will be able to take back what he has stolen <clears throat> and bring a halt to his actions and destruction in our lives. When we begin to realize who we are in the body of Christ and the authority that our precious Lord and Savior has given us, listen tonight, breaking the spirit of poverty <clears throat> out of our lives. You got to know that I preached in many, many of different cities that have been strongholds for the devil, my friend. The symptoms of, of, of this uh, are many. Often the local churches suffer from, well, uh, senseless uh, conflicts or, or unexplained problems. The congregation experiences little growth and the preaching of the word is not easily proclaimed or, or well received by the community. These are the symptoms, but behind the scene Satan is the culprit. In such cases, those spiritual strongholds must be dealt with and bound for the ministry to be effective. All believers have authority over the devil. Are you a believer tonight? Do you believe from Genesis to Revelation? Are you a believer of the Word of God? Are you a whosoever? Whosoever must be a believer because without faith it is impossible to please God. You've got to know tonight if you want the spirit of poverty broke out of your life. Uh, if you listen tonight, I'm telling you, God is not dead. He's alive and He lives forever. He changes not. He's the, well, praise God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Reach up, reach out, take a hold of the unchangeable hand. And recognize as a believer that you have authority over the devil. Listen, all Christians must be aware that God has equipped them to overcome Satan's power. The Apostle Paul said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Listen, they're not of a fleshly or earthly nature, my friend, but mighty in God. For pulling down strongholds, look in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And ask God to write His word upon the tablet of your heart. Now listen, you may recall the time when the 70 disciples returned to the Lord, rejoicing about the results of their ministry. Listen, they remarked, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Look in Luke chapter 10, verse 17. But then Jesus pointed out that the great marvel of this was that the devils were subject to them because their names were written in heaven. In other words, because they were saved. Because of their relationship with Christ, they had authority over the devil in the name of Jesus. 
tonight we must examine ourselves and realize where we are in our relationship with Jesus Christ, our precious Lord and Savior. We must begin to examine ourselves. We must begin to speak truth into our life. We must begin to deny ourselves, pick up our cross, and follow after Jesus. We must make a choice to whom will we serve. Now listen, Jesus has given all his followers... All those who know Jesus personally as their Lord and Savior, the authority to use His name to expel the forces of the evil. Listen to all believers. Jesus said, In my name they will cast out demons. Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 17. You got to know how to break strongholds and keep them broken. You got to realize tonight, breaking the spirit of poverty off and out of our lives in the name of Jesus, we must know where we stand in our relationship with Jesus. Do you believe from Genesis to Revelation? Will you stand upon the promises of the Word of God, knowing that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God? Listen, we've got to understand this word authority. Every believer has the right to use the authority of Jesus' name to bind and take authority over Satan's activities in our lives. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first bind the strong man, and then he will be able to plunder his house. Look there in Mark chapter 3, verse 27. A spoken command to the devil that he is bound and he must leave the stronghold. Exercising authority in the name of Jesus will expel the devil's influence. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Look in Mark chapter 16 verse 17. As you stand upon the promises of the word of God. Claiming victory in our life. Not just saying it but doing it. Being a doer of the word of God. Not just a hearer only. Applying the word of God in our life. Now listen, I want to talk about how to break the spirit of poverty that is over someone's life tonight. We're not just talking about money. you got to grab a hold of this. Listen, there are people in lack of, of faith. There's people that need an increase of faith, but the spirit of poverty is blocking their connecting line to their Savior. Listen to me. This is real. We're at war, and there are souls hanging in the balance. The devil's madder than hell is hot, but I come to you tonight with good news. As we come back, we're going to talk about how to break this spirit of poverty that we've been talking about. We'll be right back. Be blessed in Jesus' name. He was sitting on the steps of the Union Rescue Mission Holding a tattered Bible in his hand I sat down beside him And this old man started preaching The gospel according to a drinking man He said, I've lived on Whiskey Road The last ten years or so Sleeping out in the cold here in Chicago Then he pointed to a neon cross Only two words were written he said, Mister, this one thing I know Jesus saves, Jesus saves If he didn't, I wouldn't be here today Jesus saves, Jesus saves And when life and the bottle Take you to the bottom, Jesus saves When I got home that night I reached for my bottle And began to pour the whiskey down the drain I fell down on my knees I cried, Jesus save me please since that night I've never been the same Jesus saves, Jesus 
Jesus say If he didn't I wouldn't be here today Jesus says Jesus says And when life and the bottom Take you to the bottom Jesus says Now if your soul is lost Just look up to that cross All you have to do Is just believe Jesus saves Jesus saves Jesus saves Jesus saves And when life And the bottle take you to the bottom, Jesus saves. Well, praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome in everybody to the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, good to see Sister Rachel, uh, House of Prayer Radio Ministry, Evangelist Willie Grizzle there out of Scottsville, Kentucky, uh, Brother Philip, Sister Carolyn, my lovely wife. Just God bless each and every one of you. Please remember, I cannot back up my chat room, so uh, leave your prayer request in the chat tonight. We'll print those out and pray over those before we leave the studio area. Um, know that we love you and we want to stand in agreement with you as we're talking about tonight night right here how to break the spirit of poverty in our life listen if, if you're listening tonight and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you're tired of the not only the spirit of poverty but you're tired of the foolishness the devil's been doing to you in your life listen if you're not a Christian you must first receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior Otherwise, my friend, Satan is your father and boss and lots of spirits will control your life. I know you think that's not nice, but it's the truth. If you're not born again, if you're not serving Jesus, you're serving the devil. That's the truth. There's no in-between. There's no fence to stand a straddle of. This day is the day of salvation. Choose you this day. Whom will you serve, heaven or hell? A lot of people claiming to be born again, claiming to be children of the Most High, but they're not, and their fruit tells on them, and the spirit of poverty is destroying their life. But one of the ways to break the spirit of poverty in your life, the first and most important thing, is you must be born again. Now listen, if you're saved, your heart is clean and the Holy Spirit lives there, my friend. The spirit of poverty, it can only live in your mind. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. Listen, the spirit of poverty lives in lies. Lies that you believe are truth. You have to destroy the spirit's house. Replace the lies with God's truth. I'm going to give you some verses. You need to write these down. And I know there's many more. But you need to read these verses until they get stuck in your mind. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 through 34. Philippians 4 and 13. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6, just to give you a few. Listen, sometimes poverty is passed down through a curse. Poverty can be part of a curse. Look in uh, uh, Deuteronomy 28, verses 15 through 68. Listen, you may be under the spirit of poverty because you or your family member did something that, well, brought a curse on you. I mean, examples, you know, like going to witch doctors, stealing, uh, talking to, to ancestors, raising the, the spirit, familiar spirits. Listen, sexual sins, occult activity, occult involvement, uh, disobedient to God's word. Uh, you know, to do good and you do it not, to you it is sin. You've got to know this. Listen, the curse can be broke. Just simply repent and acknowledge the sin. Ask and receive forgiveness. Close the door to Satan. Fill your mind with the truth. 
You see, a lot of people don't repent of things they've done in their past because they, they, they don't feel they had to. They repented of what they were doing the particular moment they got saved. But put all your sins under the blood of Christ. Don't try to carry around yesterday's garbage. Many of people hold on to try to hold on to part of their past with one hand and God with the other hand. It ain't going to work. It leaves a, a spiritual door open for the devil, my friend. We must repent of our sin, all of our sin. Put it under the blood of Jesus. Cut the rope that is tied to yesterday. You see, the past is the devil's playground. We must establish the presence of God. Listen, where Satan has been uh, commanded to leave, we must fill it, fill it up with God's presence. You got to know where the presence of the Lord is. The devil isn't. Listen, Satan. He doesn't want, excuse me, Satan doesn't want God's presence near him. When the presence of the Lord is and where that the presence of the Lord is, the devil isn't. Listen, Satan doesn't want to hang around with people um, that are lifting up Jesus in worship or in song or in prayer. The presence of the Lord displaces the devil. You got to know this for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and, and what communion has light with darkness. Look in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, and we'll be right back. You got to know that if we resist the devil and draw nigh unto God, that the enemy will flee and God will draw nigh unto us. We must fill our minds with the word of God for man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There was a crippled man by a beautiful gate Peter and John came a-walking his way Peter looked down and saw the man was lame He said, get up in Jesus' name The man jumped up and he started to leap He felt the power of God from his head to his feet And that same God is waiting on you and me To get up, get up and praise and get up Praise and get up, get up and praise and get up, get up and praise and problems come, times get tough, but he's still a God that's more than enough, so get up, get up and praise and get up. Four lepers at the end of the rope, sick and diseased. All out of hope One jumped up and began to cry He said, boys, we just can't sit here and die So they started walking and their legs were weak But the power of God got into their feet And that same God is waiting on you and me To get up, get up and praise and get up Get up and praise and get up Praise and get up, get up, get up and praise and problems come, times get tough, but he's still a God that's more than enough. 
Well, praise God. I tell you, when we realize and begin to resist, when we submit ourselves and draw close to God, the Bible says this is how we resist Satan and he will flee. The devil runs from a submitted, yielded Christian, my friends. He runs from your, from your life and will run away from where you go. Therefore, submit to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Look in James chapter 4, verse 7. I want you to know tonight the way to break the spirit of poverty. I want you to know the way to break uh, uh, the devil's stronghold that he's been holding over your head or over your community or uh, trying to sweep sin under your rug tonight. I want you to know that if we'll submit ourselves and draw close to God, the Bible says this is how we resist Satan, and he will flee. Listen, we got to realize, uh, we got to hold on to this word, uh, occupation. You see, occupying. Listen, give no place or vacancy to the devil. Listen, give no place or vacancy to the devil. With Satan departed, fill that void with God. Let righteousness be the standard rule and behavior. Provide no pocket of rebellion, my friend, corruption or immorality in which Satan can find refuge to, well, rebuild his influence or strength. The scripture says to not give place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27. Do you hear the word of God tonight? If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're ready for a breakthrough in your life, uh, you're tired of living in lack. Now listen, we're not talking about money. We're not talking about just tithing. We're, we're not just talking about that. We're talking about the spirit of poverty. Listen, a lot of people uh, has a spirit of poverty for their prayer time. They spend very little time in prayer time. They hardly ever talk to God. They're in pro There's a spirit of poverty hanging over them, and the devil's blocking them and their relationship that could be uh, in Jesus. Do you hear me tonight? Give no place or vacancy to the devil. Do you get it? The Word of God tonight, let it, uh, let it just radiate through your being be like a sponge and absorb of the word of God tonight as you stand upon the promises there's victory in Jesus my friend we've got to realize that uh, we've got to know what this word fortification means to fortification fort up you get it clothe yourself with God's armor Take upon you daily the full array of God's spiritual equipment that you may, well, maintain the battle. Ready status. Be ready status. You know what I'm saying? Some of you do tonight if you served any time in the military. Listen, we, 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 we got to be ready. We, we, the born again, the children of God, we've got to be on ready status with the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, God's word, and the other links of armor. Look in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, through verse 13 uh, down to about 17 there and ask God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart. You will be ready to resist any satanic assault and well, praise God, and we'll be ready to engage the strongholds in, in others, my friend. Put on the whole armor of God. God, that ye may be able to stand against the wells of the devil. Look in Ephesians chapter 6 there about verse 11. But you want to really jump aboard 13 down to 17 and just ask God to write his word upon the tablet of your heart. As you look in Ephesians uh, 1 there, 19 through 23, and, and, and what is the uh, exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? according to the working of his mighty power, which he worketh in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seateth him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. You got to know, you got to stand on it. Jesus is the head of the church. We are the body. We are, well, where the head goes, the body has to go. We got to recognize this. We must remember this in our battle. At all times, remember who we are in Christ. Listen, the spirit of poverty, as I said earlier, is not limited to finances. It, 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 it's a, a stronghold established for the purpose of keeping us from walking in the fullness of the victory gained at the cross 
and of the blessings of our inheritance in Christ. Listen, it can include everything in our life, our family, our marriage, our job, our ministry, our worship, and even our relationship with God. Listen, once Satan gets a foot in the door, he will force his way in, my friend, and try to keep you defeated in all areas. His main goal is to keep you from fulfilling the will of God in your life, my friend. This is the poverty that I'm talking about. We can have plenty of money and still be under the influence of the spirit of poverty. You got to know that our goal in being free from the spirit of poverty is not having what we want or need, but that we have what we need to do the will of God. Unhindered from physical, material, or spiritual depravity. We we unlimited. Listen, all things is possible with God, but we've got to realize who we are in the body of Christ. You got to know the spirit of poverty is a satanic yoke that manifests both spiritually and physically when we are free of it it will first be manifest spiritually and then physically listen Jesus was completely free from the influence of the spirit of poverty look at his walk you see he went about healing the sick raising the dead and meeting the physical needs of large crowds and multiplying food. He answered needs as they arose then, and he is still doing it right now. And he give us the power. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, if you're tired of living in lack, if you're tired of not feeling like you're accomplishing what God has set for you to accomplish, then it's time to rise up and recognize who you are. Resist the devil. Draw nigh unto God. Get dressed. Begin to read the Word of God. Refreshing your mind. Refreshing your walk. you got to know there in 2 Corinthians, I believe it is, chapter 9, I think it's uh, verse 8. Yes, uh, thank, you, uh, thank you, Lord. And, and, and you got to know that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always have in all sufficiency in all things, have an abundance for every good work. For every good work. When we quit trying to do it our way, and when we quit trying to get things that we want, and we begin to realize it's not about us, but it's about Jesus. It's about the lost souls out here in this lost and hurting world when we really realize we're running out of time and that we are at war with the devil and we begin to realize that this war is real and they are souls hanging in the balance. So our first goal is to have an abundance for every good work. Whether, whether is it feeding the poor or giving uh, to... Father, the Great Commission, we must have the abundance to do it. And how does that be accomplished? By the faith that we have in our precious Lord and Savior. The faith we have in the Word that He's told us. Do we believe? Are we a whosoever? People believe, John 3, 16, whosoever believeth shall not perish. But it's hard to get them to believe whosoever in the book of Mark, chapter 11, whosoever. There's more whosoever's. You see, if we would just believe and stand on the promises, stand on the Word of God, and recognize that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You can see that in Psalms 23, verse 1. Some of you know it. But we've got to believe it. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness. The world and those who dwell therein. Listen, when God created the world, He put everything in it we would need to survive. And you and I, we need to look Satan in the face and tell him to let go of it. We must walk in all the grace of God that God has made available through the cross and His present 
position, seated at the right hand of the Father. That's above all rule, power, and dominion. I want you to know tonight, because we are born again, it is received through faith in believing who Christ is and what He has done. We do not do it in ourselves because without faith we can do nothing. Listen, we should live our lives with the goal of always having all sufficiencies in everything. We are to live our lives with, with a goal to have as much as needed or desired to fulfill the will of God in our lives. Not to live in comfort or to be able to retire early or have a large house or expensive car. We are not to run the world's race. We are to run God's race. And it is not about us. It is all about Him, God. As you reach out and reach a hold of the unchangeable hand of the great I am tonight and you realize that we've got an enemy and it's not flesh and blood. And we begin to prove our stewardship of God's property. He will reward you. It's a biblical promise as we're talking about breaking the spirit of poverty Get into God's Word. Pray for wisdom and knowledge, and He will give it to you. Walking in godly wisdom has promises, my friend. Look in the book of James, chapter 1, around verse 5. I believe he's talking about, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach. It will be given to him. Get into the Word of God. Look in Proverbs, I believe it's 3, uh, 1 and 2 there, where he's talking about my son. Don't forget my law, but let your heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace that will add to you. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with your first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Listen, God's plan for us is to be free of the spirit of poverty. So reach out tonight. Not being a hearer of the word of God only, but a doer. Listen, he tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 10, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. Listen. If we want to be victorious over the spirit of poverty in our life, we must choose God and His Word and His will first and foremost in our life. This is the only way for us to be victorious is through and by our faith in God. We can do nothing in ourselves. I pray and hope tonight that you reached out and that you go back and listen to the archive and that you run reference on the book and verse and chapters that I've left you tonight. Because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. For the truth will make us free. Be free in Jesus. I want to share some letters with you just in a little bit. Got a little bit more I want to share with you, so we'll be right back just in a moment. My goodness, God is good. I hit the highway, humming the tune I'm on the road again Another day, another motel room Paying the price to do what I do But Lord knows 
I wouldn't trade it for anything It's not a show, it's not a dream It's a higher call I'm following I'll go anywhere, any place the good Lord leads And when Sunday morning rolls around I might be on stage in some one-horse town His hand. It's just another day in the life of this preacher man I'm not on the list of the rich and famous I'm just out here working for Jesus Doing the best I can to reach one more soul yeah, I've got a family and God I miss them. They know that I'm a man with a mission I kiss them goodbye Down the road I go It's not a show, it's not a dream It's a higher call I'm following I'll go anywhere, any place The good Lord Shaking everybody's hand It's just another day In the life of this preacher man People say Hey man, haven't I seen you? Don't you sing that song about whiskey? Let me shake your hand it's just another day in the life of this preacher man It's just another day in the life of this preacher man Well, praise God. Listen, remember to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Look there in James chapter 4, verse 7. Listen, let's worship the Lord. Worship Him as our source for all of our, not only our financial needs, but our spiritual needs, our physical needs. You see, He knows before we even ask what we have need of. For He says, listen, if we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, He knows what we have need of. Stand on the promise of the Word of God. Victory is ours. If we stand, look the devil in the eye. Rebuke him and tell him with the authority that God has given us as we cry aloud, inspire not. We are victorious through the blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rebuke the devil. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, rebuke the devil. Claim victory in your life by standing on the promises of the Word of God. Woo! Praise God. Amen. All right, guys, remember, I can't back my chat up. So if you've got any questions or any prayer requests, uh, just leave them in the chat room or repost them. Uh, and, and I'll try to get to them if I can. Uh, my wife's asking for prayer there. So please remember, hey, please remember us in prayer as we step up and step out to do what God has called us to do. Pray that we always be found doing what God has called us to do, going where God sends us and always speaking what God tells us to say. Just simply remember, Sons of Thunder Ministry, when you pray, remember this old pastor. Hey, man, when you pray and we'll remember each and every one of you. We encourage you to simply obey God in your life. Listen, if, if, if tonight maybe you're in a place, maybe you're where you're going through, a, you feel like you're in a dry desert, you feel like you, God's not moving, you feel like nothing's happening around you, listen, hold on. Hold on. Don't you give up. Don't you let go. You hold on. Maybe you, maybe you just need God to answer some questions for you. Well, get into the Word of God and watch. He'll do it. When we lack wisdom, we go to the wisdom giver. 
Amen. Praise God. Let's pray one for another. Pray for all the ministries out there that are out in this world trying to proclaim the good news, the gospel of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray and encourage them to just simply obey God. I'm going to ask you tonight to do a, a step of faith. Now listen, anyone can count the number of seeds in an apple, but only God can count the number of apples in a seed. I mean, come on, if you sliced an apple and asked people, you know, what they see, they will probably reply, well, seeds. But most people see little value in seeds, my friend. But I'm telling you, take what God's gave you. Trusting God, standing on the word and the promises of God. I know it may look impossible to you, but watch what God does. Now, when we just simply trust him. Just simply trust him. Amen. All right, guys, let me share a letter. We've been getting some letters, a couple of praise reports in. Amen. Praise God. This one says, um, thank you, O Lord, for answering number five to heal our finances as you bless with sending those that owed us money just in time. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to our Lord and King. And then the remaining four says, uh, Please, Lord, save my son, save my dad, heal the relationship with our family, and bless our business. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask for your blessings over these things. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. We know that God is moving. Amen. Now, these I'm reading to you uh, come from a thing we're doing right now called Step of Faith. And simply, I'll be, I'm going to ask you to, to just take a step of faith. You, got, you need to get a $5 bill. I know you're going to say, but why? I'm going to tell you just uh, in a couple of more programs, we'll, we'll be sharing all that. But first, a step of faith. But just believing the man of God, as I'm sharing the word of God, you take a $5 bill. You get a pencil and a piece of paper. And you write down five things that you need God to do in your life quickly. Now I want you to take that $5 bill. Put it in the letter you just wrote with the with the request to God. Put it put it in the envelope. Seal it up and pray over it. Now, if you would, you just simply call our prayer request line and leave those five prayer requests on our pre-recorded line. You just call one nine three one two two nine zero seven six eight. Mail. The letter to Bishop Eddie Cheney at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. I'm just simply asking you to take a step of faith. I want to pray over your prayer request. The $5 is not mine. I will be sharing what we're going to be doing with the $5 that you send by faith. It's going to go to a, to a great need. But I'm going to share that in a, two more programs. we got two more programs as we uh, finish up with the teaching of the spirit of poverty but tonight i'm asking once again take a step of faith you find and get a five dollar bill now listen it has to be a five dollar bill it can't be five ones if you don't have one just pray by faith one into the envelope don't let not having a five dollar bill stop you from sharing your prayer request with us here at sons of thunder ministry just speak a prayer into that envelope seal it up and mail it to Bishop Eddie Cheney at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee. Then call our prayer line and leave those five prayer requests on our pre-recorded uh, line. You just simply dial one nine three one two two nine zero seven six eight. Now, if you don't hear God through my voice, then you don't do it. That's simple. If you don't hear God and you're not up to taking a step of faith and you don't want no part of it, just simply don't do it. Just continue to pray for us and pray for the ones that do hear God through this ministry. All right. Let me read this other letter. Hold on just a second. Praise God. 
I gotta get it open. <laughs> Hold on, I should have had these open. I know I'm a little old and slow, but you guys just pray with me. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, all right. It says, uh, prayer request number one, more compassion. Uh, asking the, uh, a brother to be healed, uh, to come back to the Lord. All right. Well, more compassion has been answered here, it says. Wait a minute. We've had three of the five first original prayer requests uh, answered already for this individual. They've already got more compassion, doing more for the Lord. Uh, they actually uh, asked for a healing for someone. That come through on the last letter, and their faith is increasing. Uh, wow, praise God. Had three of the five. So here is... Um, new list all right uh praying for the daughter to do work for god's kingdom uh that uh, the finances would be uh, increased for me to be able to do more for the lord and also all oh, this one touched my heart Number their their next prayer request is that God would send laborers to help Bishop Eddie Cheney in the work of the ministry. Well, thank you very much. Praise God. Amen. Wow, awesome. <laughs> All right, I I know, Brother Greg. I'm I'm old. Uh, just keep praying for me. Amen. We, we've got a couple more letters I want to read with you. But remember, we do thank God. We're going to pray over these requests. We anoint them with oil. We also are still praying over our prayer cloth. Boy, we took that to Kentucky with us. Got more names on it. This prayer cloth is almost filled up. But if you would like to have a family member or a loved one's name added to this prayer cloth that we're taking throughout this whole summer, uh, every service we go to and getting many, many, many believers to pray over this prayer cloth and every name that is on it, just simply leave it in the chat room and say, hey, add this name to that prayer cloth. Whether it be a, a friend, a, a co-worker, a husband or a wife, just tell us to add the name to the prayer cloth. We'll do that and we're going to carry that with us all summer as we continue to pray for the needs of others right here at Sons of Thunder Ministry. I want to thank you for taking time to do that. Remember, um, I'm sorry if I missed a prayer request in the chat room, but I can't back my chat up. So, But know this, we do print those out. If there's any questions or a prayer request in there, we'll try to email you, or maybe we'll do a, a program on the question you asked. Amen? If you want to ask questions, please feel free to do so. I don't know that I can see them. I don't see none right now. But uh, I don't see no prayer request right now now neither but uh, you obey God you do that first and foremost uh, once again we want to ask you if you would and could to call our testimony line if you've got a shout of victory if God's done something for you amen let the world know that God's not dead he's alive pick up the phone and dial one nine three one two two nine zero seven six eight hey and just shout out a victory let them know what God has done for you and your family where he's brought you from where he's got you and where he's taking you to. Remember, we asked you to pray about taking a step of faith. You just simply would um, hunt you a $5 bill, get a pencil and a, pay, a piece of paper, and write down five things that you need God to do in your life. Now listen, this $5 bill represents five stones. We're going to be talking about uh, uh, little David, and we're going to be talking about why he picked up five, but he only needed one. This is why the $5 bill, uh, you know, instead of five ones. But get you a pencil and piece of paper and write down the five things that you need God to do in your life quickly. And... Um, you know, put it in the put the five dollar bill in the in the letter you just wrote with your prayer request. Put it in the envelope, seal it up, and pray over it. Then you pick up the the phone, you call our prayer line, and leave those five prayer requests on our pre recorded line. You just simply mail the the prayer request to Bishop Eddie Cheney at two nineteen Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee three eight five seven one. 
we got two more programs, and we're going to be sharing with you the exciting news of what we're going to do with the $5 that come out of each prayer request, each letter that's been sent each week. Amen. Some giving praise. We're seeing God move. Man, just because of a step of faith. It, it has nothing to do with the $5 bill that God's moving. you got to know that. It's something we're going to do with the $5 bill, re- showing and representation of fighting our giant. But anyway, we'll be sharing that in two more programs. Amen. So we just ask you to pray and simply obey God. If God says do it, do it. If you don't feel it, don't do it. But I, you know, But I'm telling you. Sometimes you just got to step out and trust the men and women of God around you. If you hear the voice of God in this ministry, get aboard, get in, hold on, endure. We'll be right back. This ain't no house of the blues It's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blues Lay your burden down Hey, crank the music loud Forget about your hurts Endless house and church Cause when your praise goes up The glory will come down Let go of your fear and dry your tears God's gonna turn it up This ain't no house of the blues It's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blues This is Pauline from Crossville. I just wanted to call and just thank God for waking me up this morning. Just thank him for everything he's doing for me. He's just, he's answered so many prayers for me. He's blessed me so much. 
And, you know, we've been doing the sending in the five things that you need God to do for you. And, you know, I just want to praise God that two of mine's been answered. You know, God has financially blessed us with what we need. You know, that was one of my prayers. And, you know, I thank God for that. And he, he has blessed me so much of healing my body. And I praise him. I just can't praise him enough for it. I thank him so much. And just remember, keep remembering, you know, my other prayers. God, God knows what they are, but I'll send them in today and that way that, uh, they can be read on the radio or whatever. But I just love all of you and I just thank God for everything. God bless everybody. Bye bye. gate. Peter and John came a-walking his way. Peter looked down and saw the man was lame. He said, get up in Jesus' name. The man jumped up and he started to leap. He felt the power of God from his head to his feet. And that same God is waiting on you and me to get up, get up and praise and get up. Praise and get up, get up and praise and get up, get up and praise and problems come, times get tough, but he's still a God that's more than enough, so get up, get up and praise and get up. Four lepers at the end of the rope, sick and diseased. All out of hope One jumped up and began to cry He said, boys, we just can't sit here and die So they started walking and their legs were weak But the power of God got into their feet And that same God is waiting on you and me To get up, get up and praise and get up Get up and praise and get up Praise and get up, get up, get up and praise and problems come, times get tough, but he's still a God that's more than enough, so get up, get up and praise and get up. Brother Boyd London in Idaho, we love you all. We're praying for you, and God bless you. I've been keeping the ministries in prayer each day, many times each day, and uh, I'm pretty busy. We've got a couple disabled people to take care of, so sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't listen to the programs till later. Uh, I was able to get in on some of the programs this afternoon, and we really appreciate you all for doing the programs. They help us out a lot. This testimony line helps us out a lot. Praise the Lord, and uh, glory to God. And uh, But when I can get in there and listen to the programs, I really appreciate them and listening to them. And I just am so grateful to God to have this testimony line going where I can call in and help get the good news of Jesus out to a lost, dying, and hurting world. I know, I believe Brother Eddie was going to be talking about the spirit of poverty and the uh, spirit that gets in people and kind of hinders people from doing what God wants them to do in their lives. And uh, 
one of the things that I've seen in this world myself is uh, so many people want to believe in Jesus and want God to bless them and prosper them and help them, but a lot of people really don't want to lay down their lives and do what God wants them to do, helping other people. A lot of people want to believe in Jesus, but for some reason their spirits, their spirit doesn't want to let them serve and help other people. They just believe in Jesus. And if you ask them, would you like to pray for someone and get somebody healed? They don't really want to pray for others. Would you like to share testimonies and encourage your brothers and sisters? They overcame by the word of their testimony. For some reason, the spirit in them doesn't fire them up to want to share testimonies. I know in my spirit, uh, well, I'm just fired up to share testimonies. I'm fired up to call these testimony lines and share testimonies. I love sharing my testimony. I love praying for people and getting them healed. We shared our testimony with Dusty Warriors here and prayed with him. He was in gangs and on drugs. God sent us out to him after his uh, stepdad had beat him, and we brought him in and shared our testimony with him and prayed with him of our spirits being on fire for the Lord. And Dusty, you know, took Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior. He's been drug-free for a couple years now, and we've still been helping him out. But, you know, having that kind of a spirit in you where you want to do what God wants you to do, where you obey, we obey God, and share our testimony and pray with and we've got that spirit where we'll go where God wants us to go, do what God wants us to do, and say what God wants us to say. But a lot of people, the spirit in them, for some reason, they just don't, they're just lukewarm. They just don't want to do anything for Jesus. They believe in Jesus, but they don't want to pray for others, don't want to share testimonies, don't want to do what God wants them to do. And I hope that people can really change and get a spirit in them where they'll want to pray for others and do what God wants them to do in their lives and be welcomed into heaven also. It could have eternal implications if we're lukewarm and have a bad spirit and don't want to help others and don't want to get sent out of our life. We could be called workers of iniquity and told to depart. So I hope God will help us all to get a good spirit in our hearts and minds and really obey what he wants to do. God bless all and have a good day. Amen.
this is Brother Boyd London in Idaho, and uh, just wanted to call in and let you know that I love you all, and I'm praying for you, and I'm praying for the ministries many times each day, and I've just been thinking about things and just about how many people in the world don't know God, they don't know Jesus, so many people don't know Jesus, they don't have Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, and they don't have his help in their lives, and I was just feeling sad just thinking about it. Remember when Jesus uh, walked out and he looked at the crowds and looked at the people and he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like a like a like uh, like sheep without a shepherd, and, and Jesus had compassion on the people out there, and I've just been feeling that today, just thinking about how many people live not knowing the Lord without having Jesus as a personal Lord and a Savior, and of course, if they don't if they die like that and don't have Jesus as a personal Lord and Savior, they're going to go to hell, which is so sad. And I feel bad for the people out there. But the good news is, as a, through this testimony line and and through our uh, prayers and as we through the radio programs, as we go out and preach to others, we can help these people find Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior and get saved. So there's some good news. That's why it's so important for us to go out and witness to others and share the good news of Jesus to a lost, dying, and hurting world so other people can have Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I um, was controlled by pornography, lust, anger, cursing, and so many sins in my life. When I, I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, confessed Him as Lord, I was baptized in the lake, and Jesus got those sins out of my life and saved me from going to hell. He's my personal Lord and Savior. Not only that, He's healed me many times. I was healed from a serious back injury, from a car accident, never had to have surgery. He's healed and helped me so many times in my life and delivered me from trials and challenges. I love the Lord so much. And I'm telling, if you'll, telling you, if you'll turn your heart and life over to Jesus, he died on the cross for you. He'll forgive you of your sins, set you free of your sins, heal you from sicknesses and diseases, and deliver you from trials and challenges. Please turn your heart and life over to Jesus if you haven't. Let me read a couple of great scriptures here. These are some of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. Second Chronicles 16.9 For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. And I'm telling you, the eyes of the Lord look throughout the earth to find people, maybe people that are hearing this message, who want to turn their hearts and lives over to Him, and He will strengthen you, and He will help you. God loves you, and Jesus loves you. Psalm 103, 1 through 5, one of my favorite psalms. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget out all His benefits, who forgives all your sins, and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so your youth is renewed like the eagles. God will forgive all your sins, heal all your diseases, and redeem your life from destruction. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Amen. I've got victory